Helldivers 2 is a game that throws you straight into the chaotic battlefield in the name of democracy, and every single one of us is here for the ride. But when you first land in this battlefield, it can be a very overwhelming experience. My name is Cal from Realm Space Gaming, and today I'll be sharing my favourite early game build that any player can use and master from the very start of the game. Using a well put together build will help you in Helldivers 2, especially when you have several currencies that you need to balance to unlock new weapons, stratagems, armour and ship upgrades. These currencies are medals, requisition points, samples and super credits, which I am sure you will all become familiar with soon enough. Learning about these currencies can help you overcome your biggest barrier to entry with a game such as Helldivers 2 as you'll start to build up your arsenal of stratagems, weapons and armour while continuing through the game over time. Starting out with weapons, you'll first need to decide on your primary weapon. Be warned that it is quite easy to waste your medals by unlocking all sorts of random guns, but that would be a bad idea as you may need your medals to unlock something you want later down the line. I'm going to give you three options to pick from and the first is the standard AR-23 Liberator, which is a solid weapon to use on any mission. By holding down the reload button you can swap from fully automatic to semi-automatic based on your style of play. I quite like this as it allows me to be more accurate at longer ranges and go fully automatic at close range engagements. The other recommended weapon would be the SMG-37 Defender. Some people would call purchasing this a waste of medals, but for us the weapon is a solid choice for those of you who like the up and close personal playstyle, plus it is a one handed weapon meaning that you can carry items for objectives and shoot at the same time which is a massive bonus. Then finally is the AR-23E Liberator from the Steeled Veterans Warbond, and I must admit that this one is not highly recommended, but I did enjoy using it as it felt satisfying to hit enemies with harder hitting bullets. One of the other two options are the better choice here. When it comes to secondary weapon options, you really are limited to one weapon that stands as king amongst the pile. That is the P19 Redeemer. I wish I was joking when I say that there is nothing else that compares to this fully automatic machine pistol. It has great damage and a high fire rate allowing you to shred any enemy in close to long range combat. After weapons, we are moving on to stratagems. There are a number of these that you may think about purchasing for an early game build, but as you slowly enter higher difficulties the groups of enemies will increase, therefore meaning you need to start getting good at clearing out hordes of enemies. And that's where the first stratagem comes in, which is the grenade launcher. This beauty comes with two benefits every time you use it. The first is clearing out big groups of enemies, which is fantastic, and the second is for taking out bug nests and automaton factories with eats. Just pop a grenade in and boom, the objective is destroyed. Not only that, but the grenade launcher can also be used to clear out most of the early game elite enemies with ease. The only time you may find some difficulty is with the chargers, which start to appear more frequently at difficulty level 5. Other than that, it really is one of the best stratagems in the game, and I would recommend that all squads have at least one on the team. One of our other favourite suggestions is the machine gun. It's available from the start of the game and can be great at clearing out hordes of enemies as they push you and your team, but also great at melting down those elite enemies too. It's not as powerful and destructive as the grenade launcher, but not a bad option if someone else is running a grenade launcher. The main issue I have with this however is that when you reload, you go stationary, and you crouch down to reload giving enemies time to get close and kill you. It makes running and gunning with this thing so much harder to do, which is why I would pick up the grenade launcher instead. I spent some time talking to the other members of Realm Space and had to convince them not to waste requisition points on things like the flamethrower and laser cannon. I know as a gamer hearing that must hurt, but in Helldivers 2 the flamethrower just isn't that strong. Sure the enemies slowly burn to death, but they can still run up to you and kill you. Plus the chances of setting yourself and your teammates on fire is just way too high to make this a viable option. Now as for the laser cannon, I know it sounds awesome and cool in a game like this, but its damage just sucks. It lacks power and the hard hitting force that other options give you, plus the utility that something like the grenade launcher offers you, and the squad. When it comes to airstrikes and orbital stratagems, you are welcome to use whatever you like, and of course you should test some of these out yourself. However, for this beginner build, I would highly recommend the Eagle Airstrike. It is a brilliant airstrike that lands in a straight line and you can clear out a huge area of enemies and objectives that need to be destroyed. I wish I was kidding when I say this is so good that I literally used it all the way until around difficulty level 6. Another option here is the Eagle Napalm Airstrike. It's a great way to kill a bunch of enemies and control a spawn point for either faction. 
The best use is on the bug nests as they spawn and instantly start burning as you control the battlefield. I really can't recommend that you purchase something that drops gas or smoke. These are honestly useless except for very niche uses. Anyone who recommends these to you should be launched from a cannon in the name of democracy. Now moving on to the last two stratagems for this incredible beginner build, I will suggest the Gatling Sentry. This thing is the bread and butter for so many runs in the game. It just slices through enemies so easily and can control groups like they are nothing. It does start to fall off towards difficulty level 6, but that is before you upgrade it with the ship modules, which we will talk about shortly. The main issue with these is that they can burn through their ammo and disappear quite quickly, but you can get extra ammo from the upgrades later on. Another thing that you should be aware of is that the turrets don't differentiate you and the enemies. If the turret is currently blasting an enemy and you get in the way, prepare to be mowed down. Basically, hide behind your turret and hope that you never come between it and an enemy. Then last but not least, we have the most solid stratagem in the whole build, and that will continue making its way all the way to endgame, and that is the Mortar. This is literally one of the best stratagems in the entire game. You place it down and it fires a bombardment into the air to hit enemies and clear groups. I love using this thing to clear out camps and nests before approaching them, clearing out enemies that chase me and on defense missions to clear out the spawn super easily. Just be warned though that with randoms you will most likely find a few of you dying as you will just fire into groups even if you or your teammates are nearby. Other than that, you'll never want to use anything else ever again since the stratagem is just too good. At least one person in every group should be bringing in a mortar. Now let's talk about upgrading your brand new stratagems. First, you'll need to collect as many samples as you can and these are the special currency that allows you to purchase ship modules that upgrade your stratagems. You'll find these scattered all throughout the missions in random places, points of interest such as nests, factories and other compounds. Now once you've gathered yourself enough samples for your first upgrade, you shouldn't just pick the first thing you see as each category in the ship module page affects different stratagems which means upgrading certain ones first may not be beneficial to you at all. One thing we recommend is to pick your first few upgrades based on either your favourite stratagems or your most powerful. For example, we recommend taking the Gatling turret and mortar which are sentries and these tend to stick around for a long time. So you should look at investing into the stratagem upgrades that give these buffs and make them so much more efficient to use. Eventually, as you progress through the game, you will most likely have all of these unlocked, but it will take a while as it seems collecting samples is quite a slow progress at times. There are also three different samples, these being common, rare and rarer. You'll find common samples in every single mission you play, but be aware that you'll only start to find rare samples from difficulty level 4 and above, while you find rarer samples from difficulty level 7 and above. Now in terms of armor for the build, this really is up to you and your favorite type of passives. Each main piece of armor has different stats depending on its category and delivers a different passive. This could range from more throwing distance, extra stims to heal more, carry more grenades and several other cool features. If you are someone who purchased the Super Citizen Edition, then you'll be able to start the game with the DP53 Savior of the Free Armor Set. This is good to use at the start of the game as it has the passive Democracy Protects, which gives you a 50% chance to survive when you take lethal damage that should have killed you. Now for those of you without the Super Citizen Edition, don't worry as armor in the game is currently bugged, so the amount of armor each piece gives you is set to the default. This means that you should stay away from heavy armor entirely until it is fixed. I would then recommend you take some of the light armor in the game with whichever passive suits your playstyle suggest this because light armor increases your speed and stamina regen while normally lowering your total armor rating. But because of the bugs it's the same as medium so right now you should use this armor to get a bunch of buffs to speed and stamina without losing any armor. Let's quickly talk about grenades. Honestly the default grenade in Helldivers 2 is your best choice for quite a while. I'd recommend sticking with it until you get to page 5 of the Helldivers Mobilize War Bond which is where you'll find the G16 Impact Grenade, which is currently the best in the entire game. Now that we've spoken about the entire build, let's put it together for you in a convenient place. Starting with weapons, you want the SMG37 Defender. Of course, you do have other options such as the default AR23 Liberator, but you're going to have to spend medals to progress through the war bonds, so pick up the SMG37 for a bit of flavor. Secondary wise, we are picking the P19 Redeemer. Nothing else can really keep up with it, so it's a staple in every build. Then for armor, we are picking any light class armor for those tasty buffs to speed and stamina regen, especially while armor is currently bugged. You grenade, pick anything that you like. Here we're going to just use the standard grenade until you unlock the G16 impact grenade. Then for stratagems, we are starting with the grenade launcher. 
it's just too good compared to other options. We also want the Eagle Airstrike to clear out buildings, objectives and large groups of enemies including some of the early game elites. Then for the last two we are taking the Gatling Sentry because of how it slices through groups like a hot knife in butter and my absolute favourite the Mortar. This thing is just incredible and a staple for most builds in the game. Now it's all good and dandy having the build but there are important things that you should take note of when using it. Firstly this starter build is designed around giving you a little bit of everything so you can handle every early game situation. It doesn't make you grind for over 20 hours to unlock things and puts you in the best place to start the game. Here it allows us to unlock and work towards things that keep us progressing smoothly until reaching the higher difficulty levels. Later on you will start to get more XP and rewards as you progress so doing this smoothly is the best thing that you can do. Of course the build is excellent for playing solo or in a group as you can clear out the objectives of ease thanks to the grenade launcher and eagle airstrike stratagems. Any teammate will be lucky to have someone with this build on the team in co-op especially when you can deal with the objectives and defeat any enemies that comes your way with the gatling sentry and mortar. You really are prepared for any situation. Especially if you're a player who wants to be more aggressive and clear out all those objectives to the maximum rewards before the time runs out. Just be careful doing this though as Helldivers 2 is designed to be a 4 player cooperative game so being too cocky and running in to die will only be a detriment to your team even with a build that can do it all. And there it is, the best early game build that will let you squash bugs and tear apart any automaton from the start of the game. Of course as you progress you will need to go through the war bonds so definitely give other things a try and see what type of new weapons and stratagems that you like. If you think we've missed something that should be included in a future video then give us the details in the comment section below. We'd also love to see what builds you are running and if we do share your build in a future video of course we will shout you out and the incredible weapons and stratagems that you're using. If you want to see more Helldivers 2 content on our channel then please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. We've got so many more builds and guides coming so don't miss out on any videos that can help you become the best Helldiver. My name is Kel and from the entire team here at Realm Space Gaming we hope that you have a great day and keep on fighting in the name of democracy.